What's going on guys? It's episode 15 of Boom or Bust, the show where you design subway for enclosures and I 3D print them and we test them to see whose is the loudest. Today's design has been sent in by Chris from Belgium and is called The Spiral and it's quite clear to see where it got its name from. This is a great big spirally kind of quarter wave design. Now, Chris didn't say in his email whether he used any calculations or formulas or any real information about this design, what it's tuned to, etc. So possibly there was some science behind it, but it's also possible that this was kind of just done by eye and uh, going by the varying widths of the line as it kind of spells round to the exit, I would probably assume the latter. Now, at first glance, it might look a little similar to the Fibonacci fourth, but it is quite a lot different. It's not a fourth order like the Fibonacci was, and is just literally a T line. It's going to be tuned. The actual quarter wave uh, part of this will be tuned much lower than the Fibonacci fourth because of its length. It spirals all the way around and round and round. So I'm very curious to see what it sounds like for a start. It kind of resembles a seashell. You know, when you kind of put it up to your ear and you can hear the sea, it sounds very echoey and lots of stuff going on inside there. Really interested to see how it sounds and whether it actually performs well and what it's tuned to. So, without further ado, let's slap it on the Dayton Dats V3, see what the impedance graph looks like and go from there. Oh yes, that's definitely a very interesting impedance sweep. That's definitely quarter wave-ish, I would say. We've got four main impedance peaks and uh, one, two, sort of two or three dips there. So let's start off. We've got the main unload here, the first impedance spike down at 65 hertz. That scales to 10 hertz. So we're fine. That's okay. Our first impedance dip, which is probably going to be the first tuning mode of this box, is at 97 hertz, which scales to 16 hertz. Hmm, this could be a bit of a low, low frequency monster. I might have to get some different test tracks just to kind of see what this can do down at those lower frequencies. But let's continue on. The first frequency that we test is 25 scaled hertz, which is 150. And that is all the way up here, about three quarters of the way to the second impedance spike. We are at 10 ohms here at our first test frequency. I think we're going to get a bunch of excursion mechanical limits reach before the 15 watts for sure unless there's a lot of cabin loading um, the impedance spike itself tops out at I think that's 164 Hertz at 14 ohms Wow lots and lots of rise because there's not very much load on the cone up there the next frequency we test is a 198 so that sitting about halfway down the impedance spike so that's gonna be a relatively decent amount of excursion as well a little bit less though up at 8 ohms so double the impedance there starting at four ish the next impedance dip is down at 283 hertz which is actually very close to the next frequency we test which is a little bit behind that which is our 270 so that's going to be our first frequency that's really going to be close to a tuning mode of this t line i guess this quarter wave thing uh, but the cabin isn't really well optimized for 270 it's never really been a particularly loud frequency uh, regardless of what the box is it's kind of like one of those frequencies where it's not the very loud so but it might help bring our average up a little bit the fact that we are loaded down there um, the third impedance spike is tiny is very sharp and it's up at 304 Hertz up at 8 ohms and the last frequency we test being a 360 is down here at the bottom of this third spike at 4.6 ohms um, so that's kind of on an impedance dip but I think that that's not necessarily gonna be that loud we'll see could be a bit of a power hog that one and uh, not be very loud so overall looking at this i think lots of excursion possibly not that loud but um yeah uh, let's see what it sounds like i'm curious about this oh god the harmonics are straight away on this one bloody hell i thought that would be the case loads of mechanical excursion at this 150 lowest frequency bit displacement but not absolutely loads and we reach mechanical limits with about two or three watts here on the wattmeter next frequency up 
Similar story, still not that clean, and got a lot of mechanical noise as well. This driver, I've had to run it invert mount because the hole was too small on the STL that was sent over, but it does work invert, so that's why it's like that. This is a noisy kind of basket and motor setup. It doesn't have any pole vents, a tiny little neo magnet, so it's a little bit noisy on the back end, and still not a bunch of not that much displacement out of the uh, the opening here. Let's let's try this frequency. The next one up 270 is the first one where it's supposedly supposedly loaded. Oh yes, more power draw, less excursion, and a lot more displacement out of here. Lastly, 360. anything coming out of here and it's uh, drawing quite a bit of power so I don't think that's gonna be that loud either what did I tell you instantly right from the start there's just no bottom to that sine wave <laughs> it's just a massive harmonic what a mess that is at the 25 scaled Hertz looks disgusting the fundamental is instantly raced up the graph by the second harmonic and they pretty much reach equal amplitude by the end of it with a bunch of others coming in there at the end as well. Now our 33 scaled Hertz of 198 looks way better. It's complete stark contrast and on the RTA it stands pretty much on its own until we get right up to the limit. And the second and third harmonics aren't even really that prominent. The 270 which is next is quite loaded by this line and the sine wave looks pretty beautiful and wow the fundamentals on its own for ages there before the second just comes up very minimally there not even a third or fourth harmonic in sight it's very nice and the 360 uh, it looks okay but it's slanted back a bit it's like leant back and that's just probably the cone being pushed out or sucked in slightly and finding a new oscillation center but in terms of harmonics yeah it's looking pretty good it's not very loud so the second harmonic is about half the amplitude of the fundamental the third just creeping in there at the end um but yeah it looks all right but what it do on those test tracks let's slap it in the cabin and find out if it's actually any good once it's in a kind of loaded environment here. lower tracks for getting that sheet moving so <laughs> although it didn't look that impressive on the more kind of higher musical kick bassy stuff the lower frequencies like 20 25 scaled hertz on those slow down tracks were absolutely brutal interesting to see how it does here maybe it won't be quite as bad as it seems if the lower frequencies can bring up the average so let's start off with a 25 scaled hertz on the meter what are we doing Oh, I was not expect expecting that one forty seven point one. Okay, okay. Wow. Uh, okay, well, uh, I'd say that's definitely the Helmholtz mode helping that out a bit, but that is pretty nuts. Uh, and very nice score there at 25 scaled hertz. What are we doing? Can we maintain them? This score is only any good if the others are loud as well, otherwise, the average is just going to absolutely plummet. 
Wow, there's 15 watts and a 138. So it, it looks okay, but it is technically like 10 dBs down. That is wild. Um, so that is the cabin going to be really helping out that lower frequency, that sort of 25 scale hertz. 138, nah. Some of the other really loud boxes we've had are equally as loud or louder at this next frequency up. So yeah, this is um, not looking too promising for the average. Next up is 45 scaled hertz. 15.7 and a 132.3, so we're getting lower. I think this last frequency is gonna be super bad. So this is 360 hertz, probably way above what this box really wants to play. It was so quiet. I didn't even realize that I was already hitting all 23 watts there and I barely could even hear it. That is awful. <sighs> 111.1. I wonder whether the positioning of the box might be hindering that frequency a little bit. So we've got the mouth firing backwards there, which is loudest for the lower frequency stuff. I'm gonna have a play around with moving the box just to see whether that we can get that 360 up. I won't include it in the score, but I'm just curious to see how much of a difference that makes. But before we do that, one thing I do want to do is play a 20 scaled hertz, because I think that is gonna be freaking insane. So let's go for generate. So 20 scaled hertz is a 120 hertz. So let's see how loud that is. 139.4, okay, so it's pretty loud. That's quite loud for like 20 hertz. But um, yeah, it's still nowhere near that 25. Wow, that 25 must just be loud because of the Helmholtz mode of this cabin. That must be just what it is. So I'm playing the 360 hertz. I'm just gonna try moving the box around a little bit inside the cabin to see if we can get it any louder. So we're currently doing what, like a, it's between a 105, 107, because the uh, score is so low, so it's very inaccurate down here. So let's just try shifting this around a little bit and seeing if it changes much. So already by putting my hand in the cabin, it's louder. I'm going to spin this around a little bit. Oh! So we're already up at a 122 just by having it spun around a little bit. And the exit there closer to the sensor. You can see the score instantly disappear as I spin it around to the back. Look. This is facing the back, 105. If I spin it, instantly louder. Okay, so that is currently the loudest position for the higher frequency, the 360. So I'm gonna run these tests again, all of these four frequencies, and just to see whether our average is increased now that it's in this closer position. It's kind of almost the, um, the mouth is almost firing right at the center, which might be cheating a little bit, and it's not very far back in the cabin. So you would never really have it like this in real life, but I'm just really curious to see what ends up giving us a louder average, a louder low frequency score, and it requires a high frequency one, or move forward a bit with the high frequency score a little bit better. Still not bad, even though the position is different. Okay, maybe we'll move, maybe we'll do, I think this I think this new position is going to be louder. What do you guys reckon? Do you think that's fair? Having it kind of forward here like I don't know it's it's not how we've been doing the rest of them. 133.3 that's quite considerably down. That's because that's the quarter wave mode of this box. So for the quarter wave to be loud, you want the highest pressure uh, point to be right at the back here where like the mouth exit is and then the sensor like furthest forward would be loudest on that one. 120.9 at the 45 scale. That is a huge drop. Okay. 128.1. It's not great, but it's like better than what, 111? <laughs> so then I'm going to put it back to firing it back for the door closed test. Okay, door is closed off. What's she doing? 135.4. 133.4. A 112, may, maybe the position would help. 120.8. So yeah, it's like 8 dBs louder in that position, even with the door closed at uh, 360. 
So how are we looking on the leaderboard then? Well, unfortunately, despite our ridiculous 146.7 dBs at 25 scaled hertz, we are straight into bust status. With the door open doing a 132.18 and with the door closed a 126.8 as well. And believe it or not, the scores averaged between the two positions of the box are exactly the same like to a 0.4 difference or something you can calculate it yourself look at the scores in the uh, thing and calculate it is absolutely you can't believe it that it's exactly the same score so that makes me think that averaging out the scores across a range from like 25 scale to 60 scale actually negates the benefits and drawbacks of one position versus another where one position is louder at lows and less on highs and vice versa the score may actually end up averaging out to be about the same but i haven't confirmed that because i haven't done enough tests but at least for this enclosure the both positions average to be exactly the same like can't believe it Overall then, you can see this box does very poorly given its size. It is just below the base barrel, which was a very tiny little cool enclosure. And it actually did even worse than the Nuta Shooter in both categories. The only thing that it was able to beat was the sealed enclosure and the Omiramid and the Travesty, which isn't that much to brag about. However, if the frequencies that I was testing here were lower, I think this would do a lot better. This is just tuned far too low. I don't think that, like I say earlier, any calculations were done in the line length or anything like that. So say we tested from, I don't know, 15 hertz through to 35 hertz instead, this box might do really well and it might perform better if it was redesigned with a different tuning. Now, what is slightly annoying is that just as I was starting to film this episode, my guy over here Stephen, who designed the Fibonacci 4th, sends it in a very similar looking enclosure, but the expansion of the spiral is based on the Fibonacci sequence in a similar way to his Fibonacci 4th was, but this would just be a quarter wave resonator and it looks much better. The line expands at a kind of, you know, with, with the Fibonacci sequence in expansion outwards rather than kind of changing in width as it goes along. And I think that that has a better chance of performing really well. So I kind of am not sure if I'll do it now because I've done one that's very similar similar to I don't want to do too many very similar enclosures but if there's enough call for it then maybe I will uh, I'll do it as well towards the end of this season. Did anyone see Hexibase's new video on the seventh order with a little four inch driver that thing looked freaking awesome. I would love Pete to design a enclosure for this series but I think he has commented on it before and I think the comments that he made leads me to believe he might not necessarily understand that the frequencies are scaled as well. I think he said to someone on a Patreon live that it doesn't scale correctly due to the lengths of the waves at different frequencies so that makes me believe that he thinks that this is being tested at those low frequencies between 25 and 60 rather than having the frequencies scaled i don't know to be fair if i was p and i was as busy as him i probably wouldn't have actually watched my own videos to see if that's the case or not you might just assume that we're playing low frequencies here but um i'm sure Pete's far too busy to be designing an enclosure for free just to send into some weird youtube channel or so but if he did design something i'm sure it would be right up there with the leaders but if you do have enough time to design something and send it in, well, feel free. There is a link in the video description to all the information you'll need, TS parameters, box size, maximum, etc., that you can use to design something and send it in, maybe get it featured on this series. And if you're interested in sponsoring this series, either by having a sticker on the test cabin, a sponsored message or segment in these episodes, then get in touch. There is an email in the description as well. That's it for now. Until next time, have a great week.